you mentioned uh, Brzezinski in his uh, book in the, I think it was in the 90s he mentioned three major threats for the US one is uh, Russia and Ukraine detaching Ukraine from Russia one was China preventing the rise of China the third was maybe Islam there was no mention of India and there's never been any mention of India in the 1980s, 1990s as, as a future potential competitor. But today, India is finally rising. For the first time, it's you know leaving behind some of its mediocrity. Will the West rise, uh, welcome a future rise of India? Or, or is the US already seeing India as a future threat? I think uh, any power which is the dominating one would not like another dominating power appear on the international horizon. In fact, if you look at American literature and their uh, uh, documents, the issue, strategic documents, they clear that they very clearly say that they will not allow another dominant power to rise to challenge uh, U.S. power. That is their largest strategy. What they've been doing all along is that even countries which have had past of great power, like the British and pale power, the French also in their own way, stuff like that, they're all under their control. Yes. So. India is not under their control. Right from the time when we were weak, uh, we were actually dependent uh, a lot on <coughs> others to even survive the food grains that they gave us and stuff like that. But we maintained our non-alignment posture. And they realized that India will not ever be an alliance member. It will be an independent power. So they have to assess what does India as an independent uh, strategic power which believes in this strategic autonomy <clears throat> which will follow us to the extent that it is in their national interest but not when it is not in their national interest how do we look at this power if i were to look at it as a rational american i would say that uh, india is a safe bet india has no historical wrongs to be righted if we had an historical wrong to be righted we wouldn't have <laughs> maintained a, to continue to be a member of the commonwealth <laughs> right out of independence and make the outgoing viceroy the first governor general of India. Unlike the Chinese, yeah. 100 years of this, we want to undo that and this is, the historical wrongs have to be righted. We are not revanchists. We, we don't seek revenge. Mm. Number two, our record as a, as a country. We have not invaded anyone. We have not sought anybody's territory. Yeah. We have not sent our military forces here and there. Uh, unlike uh, China, the sort of things that they're doing now yeah. or, or other countries. So India's uh, record, its behavior, uh, thinking of its ruling classes, its public, uh, is not based on uh, power politics and expanding India's power profile in the, in the world in the sense of uh, dominating and conquering uh, others. Thirdly, we are a democracy not because the West wanted us to be, but we are a democracy. Yes. We are an open society. And uh, they understand us, they comprehend us. And as a democracy, uh, we will, they can predict our behavior in international relations, uh, unlike in the case of China. Mm. So uh, we are not a closed book. We are totally open to the West, our media, the social media, the Chinese block all Western social media, yes. this and that. So the democratic, uh, angle is important in that sense of uh, giving a sense of reassurance that uh, we believe at the end of the day in the same kind of way that human society should function. Yes. So we know we're surprised. And then of course uh, the Indian diaspora in the United States, the role that they played uh, domestically. Look at uh, the manner in which the top US uh, social media firms or technology firms are headed by Indian CEOs. <clears throat> more and more Indians are now <clears throat> getting into the administration. Vice President is half Indian. Yes. There are some congressmen <clears throat> also are of Indian origin. A lot of staffers in the Congress are of Indian origin. A lot of people in the administration, especially under the present ad Democratic administration, uh, are of Indian origin. Yes. Not that it helps us in any great way, but it does not. <laughs> they're there. In the sense of familiarity. Yes. And then I would say that, look, so long as China remains a threat, there is a country in Asia, a peer of China in many ways, which also feels threatened by China. So do we have a community of interest? Yes, we have. Uh, should we strengthen that country to not to give it the power to dominate others, 
but to give it to the power to resist China. So should, should we do it? A rational view would be yes, give it. If there are certain technologies, platforms uh, that India would need, underwater domain awareness, uh, water maritime technologies, uh, ISR help in that. If this helps uh, India to meet the Chinese threat, so let's do it. But where the Americans make a mistake is that they can't think beyond an alliance. Now, if we do this, but then you have, you have to be an ally. Then you have to do what we say. Yes. And they can't tolerate uh, easily uh, a country saying that we don't agree with you, as as happened in the as is happening in the case of uh, Ukraine. They are unhappy with the position, but they have accepted it. Uh, in the larger geopolitical interests that they have, especially the China factor. Mm -hmm.